Hi, Mark. Hi, Mitra. Thank you so much for accepting the invitation as an expert, project manager. Uh, well, I hope I'm an expert. Thanks you for are. the thanks for the invitation. It's my pleasure. Um, I would like to ask you about the waterfall approach. What do you think about it, and what is your experience? Okay, I I, uh, I, I like that question because it seems a lot of people might say that it's outdated. Why are we still talking about waterfall? Well, probably because most people didn't know what waterfall was in the first place. Um, what would I say about waterfall? Well, maybe I should I should should start conceptually, um, and I don't want to go into into the basics too much. But I, I there is one sentence that I would want to say: waterfall is a is also known as the classical project management approach. Um, it is pr it is the the oldest approach to to getting projects done. Now, to give a short definition of a project, a project is a set of tasks that are identified, uh, planned, executed, monitored, and controlled, and closed to achieve a unique objective. Uh, unique is just code word for we don't know what the hell we're talking about. Okay. So now in traditional, in the traditional concept of project management, the waterfall process was as such, uh, if we go back to the triple constraints, sorry to use some bingo words here, what are, what are the unknowns that we're talking about? Well, is it the scope that we don't know about? Is it the time that we don't know about? Or is it the cost? Or is it all three? So the classical project management approach that focuses on waterfall, in theory, most people missed this part when they, when they were studying it, but it, it, this is the way it's supposed to be. If a sponsor, client, whatever you want to call them, uh, comes to a project manager with a project idea. If they know pretty much what they want, if they have a pretty, for example, I don't know if I'm thinking of one of my clients, if, if headquarters goes to one of their factories and, 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 and tells their engineer, I want you to build a factory. Okay. It's pretty clear what they want. The, the scope is fairly defined. What they don't know, although they might assume it, they don't know how long it'll take them to do it and how much it'll cost. So the waterfall method is a methodology that that the num the number one input is an approximation of scope. Um, maybe we should just mention the alternative because that's very in everybody's mouth. Agile. Uh, I love I love the word agile. Ninety percent of the people love to use it with enthusiasm. Ninety percent of the people don't know what it means in practice, but that's a different story. Um, agile, to put it simple, um, says well you know sometimes. When we're doing a project, we don't know what the scope is. Uh, I, as a, as a sponsor, can't really define exactly what the solution is. The project is actually to find the solution in the flow. But what I, what I do know, what I, can, what I can determine is how much time I'm going to give you and what my budget would be. Okay? So that's the inverted triangle. So that's maybe two ways to differentiate the, uh, the two. Now... Um, how do you how do you know which one to use which one when to use one or the other? Well, if you know more about scope, you use would use more waterfall. If you know less about scope, you'd use the agile approach. Now, this is the 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 big ringer in in this discussion. Um, even in classical projects, there's a certain percentage of things you don't know. Okay, so um, this is something I always tell agile people. I've never done a big classical project where I didn't do certain elements of agile and i've never done a fully agile project where i didn't force my agilists to do a at least a certain level of waterfall beforehand what nobody's talking about everybody's talking about the new approach which would be the hybrid a mixture between the two which i think is very realistic at the end of the day if you're going to be very pragmatic and cut the the academic bs out of the discussion um I believe that the waterfall method is the superior method when it comes to identifying scope and initiation and planning. But when you get to execution, if you're not using Agile, you're missing out. That's that's my... Think there is a specific industry like, I don't know, construction, because without having the foundation, you can't, you know, set the house. Is it more appropriate for the waterfall approach? Well, I mean, yes, traditionally you would say agile would be something that's more for intangible objects that have a high technological aspect. 
where defining scope is difficult for the for the sponsor because they don't have the technical background. Um, so yes, theoretically, you you could say that building a factory would be a waterfall process. Although I I do say this, I I for the last five years, I'm not an engineer, but I do a lot of consulting for 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 companies that build things that are engineers, and I strongly advise them to consider the the agile concept of release in their execution, which just means the, the big disadvantage of the waterfall method is that you spend, I'm going to take uh, some kind of percentage here, 20% of your total time, 30% of your total time planning. And the wishful thinking assumption is that when we're finished with planning, we know exactly what we're going to do and we're going to do it in the rest of the time. And the deliverable, the product that we are producing, the output, comes at the end of the project. Okay. First of all, there's always a certain element of unknown, even in well-defined projects. So how do you deal with that, number one? And number two, I think the reason why so many executives are interested in the agile approach is because they say... Um, you know, if, if my project is 12 months long and it takes just to keep the math easy, cost me 12 million euros, I'm sitting on, on razor's edge for 12 months. You're constantly telling me you're 90% done. I know you're not. One month before the project is finished, you say, oh my God, we're still not finished. You need to put more money in and we need more time. And it's an incredibly frustrating process. So what the agile concept says, well, Instead of delivering only at the end of 12 months, why not deliver regularly, maybe every two months, maybe every three months, and engage the customer? Now, you might say, well, if you're building a factory, can you do that? Not with the full classical approach, but with a little tinge of agile thinking, you can say, well, if, if the factory consists of, I don't know, five buildings, what if I build one building and commission it and then move on? And while I'm working on the other buildings, you can... You know, you can use that building, which is kind of the the agile concept. But there is there is one element I think the best way to explain what waterfall is, because a lot of people say, "What what is this this metaphor, this analogy? Well, where's the waterfall?" One of the assumptions in waterfall is that initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, controlling, closing is linear. That there's an assumption there. That's a misconception because even there, there's a certain iteration, but the iteration is limited. We really try to get, we, in, in waterfall, we try to do something and get it out of the way with and move to the next. It's kind of this, this add-on thing. Um, so, but where does the waterfall con concept come from? And, and the, the analogy I always use here is at the end of the day, if, if you're given a project, there's seven questions you have to answer right? Uh, the first question is, what the heck do you want me to do? Right? The, if for more, for senior project managers, the second question would be, why? Right? For less experienced project managers, the, the, the second, and then the third question for seniors would be, how? Okay? The fourth question, unfortunately, is not intuitive, and that is, in what sequence? What priority? Um, the fifth question would be when, who, and how much. Now, the analogy I use to explain that is, um, have you ever, Mitra, you might have heard this weird riddle, it's ancient riddle, how does one eat an elephant? Okay, what's the response to that? Well, there's no response. The, an elephant is, is, is kind of the symbolism for a large, complex project. And obviously, you, so the first answer, you can't eat it by yourself, so don't, don't try which means you can't plan a project by yourself, so don't try. That's where the concept of a scrum team or core team comes in, right? The second answer is you can't eat it as one because it's too big, you'll choke on it. So you cut it into slices, those slices are way too big. So you cut it into pieces, which is still too big. So you cut it down into bites, which is the, the concept of decomposition, which by the way, exists in both methodologies of or approaches to project management. They just use, just to confuse everybody, they use different names. Okay. Now, uh, if you if you take this analogy of, of the elephant, if you want to plan a project, there's there's seven questions you have to answer. Those are seven slices of an elephant. So to define what and why at the same time, 
uh, is a little complicated. So the, the waterfall approach is, well, ask one question first and answer it. Maybe not to 100% quality, but to a certain level. And then move on to the next question. So this is kind of the waterfall approach. The waterfall, you start with question one. You ask the question what. You get a rudimentary answer. You go to the why. Uh, they give you some kind of explanation. The why feeds the what. So there's also an iteration there, right? Then you go back to the why, back to the what, back to the why. Then you go to the how, right? Then you go back to the why. And, and this is the visualization of, of iteration, um, or a waterfall. Now, what a lot of people don't understand, and I have a little bit of a different opinion. I'm, I'm as you know, I have a, a strong affiliation also to APM, but also to PMI from my background. And uh, and if you look at the the framework that PMI uh, postulates, it says, well, you have initiation and planning, right? And what do you do in initiation? The only thing you do in initiation is you fill out your project charter and you do your stakeholder analysis. And then you look at the column, what do you do in planning? And it's like 5 million things, right? A lot of people misunderstand that. Um, I'm going to be a little bit of a contrarian here. In reality, you do the same thing in initiation that you do in planning, if you're smart. The only difference is in initiation, you do it quick and dirty. You do it rough planning. You just kind of nail down the, the basic question. So if we go back to the waterfall, the seven questions that you go through, a lot of people say, well, I go, what, why, how? In what order, when, who, and all of that will give me how much, right? Which is kind of the contentious situation because your sponsor, what's the first thing your sponsor wants to know is how much. But according to any methodology, especially to the waterfall, that's the last thing you can confirm, right? So you get you go through the waterfall method once and a lot of people conceptually thought, well, I've, I've gone through it once, I'm done. No, you're not, okay? Because in reality... You probably have to go through it two or three times to get through initiation. When you get to planning, you need to go either even further down and you need to go through it probably, I'm just depending on the complexity, another seven times. So this is, is the waterfall uh, methodology. But there is a, a strong advocacy for before we have a kickoff, before we pull the trigger, before we get to execution, Let's nail down our baselines. Let's know exactly what we're doing in scope. Let's know exactly what it is in schedule. Let, let us know exactly uh, what it's going to be in cost. Um, this is an admirable um, concept. It's still valid in many cases. Um, with the surge of technology and vaguer scopes, it's being questioned. Also, in the sense of efficiency, do we spend too much time planning? Especially if by the time we come up with a baseline, we still don't know the details. And this is where Agile has a little bit more of a, an aggressive and more hamster wheel approach to it. Instead of saying, okay, your project is 12 months long and I'm going to plan, I'm going to use two months to plan it. Why not slice your project into 12 slices? And basically what no, nobody from Agile will admit this, but this is what it is. Let's make kind of this is kind of an analogy let's make 12 projects out of it 12 releases right and we'll do plan do check act plan do check act plan do check act and we'll and the output will be quicker which i which i think is is an interesting and valid approach it doesn't always work okay um so there are particular products where you can use a version of agile but the individual releases that you have. I, the, the, the perfect example I always use is uh, if you order a car, okay? You you win in the lottery, I, I wish it upon you, right? And you buy your favorite car. What's your favorite car, Mitra? Um, it's definitely not a Porsche. It's not a Porsche. Maybe an Audi, an Audi A8. It's a nice car, Volkswagen. right? Volkswagen. Volkswagen, okay. So uh, let's say you, you buy yourself you, you're a really nice, expensive car, right? Now, uh, you probably know this. There's a waiting period for most cars, sometimes eight months, sometimes longer, right? Now, you might say, hey, uh, VW wants to be modern and agile, right? So what are they going to do? If you have to wait eight months of the car, what are they going to do? Are they going to send you the, the tires after four weeks and say, here, it's the release. The tires are finished. Enjoy them, right? So that's the analogy I often use, um, which means some products 
don't work until I have everything. By the way, the bingo language for that is called incremental. But uh, so so that's, the, the, yes, the type of product. So I, I have like a, a list of, there's probably more than 10, but I have approximately 10 reasons when to pick which one. And one of it is what's the type of product, okay? Um, some products are better. I actually think that, that this concept of uh, versions of this, by, by the way, none of this is new, okay? Um, Edward Deming with his plan, do check, the Deming cycle has ha had identified a long, long time ago. Um, when you're doing something that you don't know how to do, you take two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. And, and, uh, and the waterfall method is a more is a more extended plan, do, check, act, whereas agile cycles are more rapid and cyclical. But going back to your example, uh, don't you think car production is not really a project? Because when you're producing, introducing yeah, a new car, I can, that I can is hear a the, I can hear the uh, IPMA assessor in you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's also a question on the PMP. So yes, um, the the analogy is has a, has a weak link in that because producing a car in, in and of itself is a, is a classical production thing and would be done in a line organization, so would so would not be a project. Uh, but I was using the car as a as a relatable item uh, as an end product that you might wait uh, wait for. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry about that question. No, I, a great question. 